Thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. I am your co-host, Sarah, here with Tate today. We have a great show planned for you today. We will be covering game four between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Moving from there into new, more news in the world of conference realignment. Uh, then the future of NIL collectives versus school managed payments. Uh, moving away from sports in segment four, we'll be talking about two amazing pet stories and their impact uh, on the world of academia. And then make sure you stick around for segment five because today is Wednesday, which means we're doing dumb criminals. Um, so stick around for that. As we get started, I would like to remind you to like and subscribe to the show. That really does help. Also, we do get a lot of questions and comments that come in during the show. If you would like your question or comment read on air, one way to do that is to go to gsmcpodcast.net. You can leave a tip or donation. When you do that, that puts your question at the top of our list to ensure that we see it and then we can engage with that during the show. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Good morning, Tate. Hello, Miss Sarah. Okay, so you were talking about today is dumb criminals. Yes. So just getting it together. There is okay, so Monday is celebrity news. Yes. Tuesday is uh dating horror stories. Dating, yes. Wednesday is dumb criminals. So far so good. Thursday is Thursday, Thursday. That's all the crazy drunk stories. Right. And Florida Man Friday. So is that, Man is Friday. that correct? That seems accurate, yes. Okay. Thirsty Thursday is not just about me drinking lots of water. <laughs> yeah, gotta be hydrated. Gotta be the hydrated. Hydration is important. We both have our we both have our drinks with us to stay hydrated through the show, so we're good there. How is your day going so far? It's Wednesday, it's hump day. Hump day. Uh it's okay. Had my we had our our, our morning walk, which our is production actually, meeting walk. <laughs> which is kind of nice. Uh, we knocked out 10 kilometers, which is a little over six miles. You like saying 10 kilometers, but I, six miles. It's a nice, six miles is a nice round number. So we do our production meeting, which is we talk about everything that's going on. Plus knock out a long walk, always a big plus. So 10 kilometers or six miles. And a uh, lot of the, the issues that, adjusting to being on the show is starting to smooth out i'm liking it smooth out a little bit yeah and today is a gorgeous day holy cow it's nice out there yes so this morning it was right about what 70 72 or 70 something yeah i, I didn't i actually didn't look at the weather before so, we on our walk so but it was really nice i'm liking it all right i am as well all right so segment one uh last night was game four between the dallas mavericks and the minnesota timberwolves you said that they may may have a, a game for, you know, that, that the Minnesota Timberwolves could manage this game for, and you were correct in this case. So the Minnesota Timberwolves managed to stave off elimination by defeating the Dallas Mavericks 105 to 100 in game four of the Western Conference Finals. Carl Anthony Towns, who had struggled in the previous games, found his rhythm and scored 25 points, 25 of which came in the second half. His efforts, combined with a stellar performance from Anthony Edwards, who nearly achieved a triple-double with 29 points, 10 rebounds, and 9 assists, were crucial in score in securing the win. Despite Luka Doncic's impressive triple-double, 28 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists, the Mavericks faltered in the final minutes. Doncic and Kyrie Irving struggled with their shooting, combined for just 13 of 9 from the field. The Timberwolves' resilience, especially in the fourth quarter, was evidenced as they outscored the Mavericks 16-10 to in the final six minutes. The game was marked by significant contributions from Towns, who hit critical three-pointers in the final minutes, and Edwards, who scored a vital jumper with 39 seconds remaining. Coach Chris Finch, despite dealing with a knee injury, inspired his team from the sidelines, earning a technical foul in the process, but also igniting a fire within his players. Minnesota's defense held Dallas to 42% shooting from the field and just 35% from three-point range. The Timberwolves shot a series-best 53% from the field, showcasing a balanced attack and crucial plays down the stretch. With this win, Minnesota avoided a sweep and will head back to Minneapolis for Game 5, hoping to extend the series further. And can I just say is that as we go into this segment, okay. it 
that whenever they they mention the coach's injury in the, <laughs> you know in what the story i thought the same thing i was like oh that's right he did get he did get he, despite a knee injury i mean everyone's playing injured right now wow so yes i mean i i kind of forgot about that as well i mean that you know it's 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 rare that a coach can't be walking these streets without getting getting a little heat as well. Still got a technical foul though. <laughs> Didn't hold him back. So that's that's a, that's hilarious that you brought that up. Uh, okay. So this game felt the way I thought the series was gonna go. This this felt like the series I was expecting. Minnesota, I felt like finally showed up. This was the Minnesota that played Denver in my eyes. Um, man, it was just like, just a totally different, totally different feel. It, it felt like, I don't, it, they, they just, like there was a, there was a certain level of determination here. Now, and the big, and the big leader in that was Carl Anthony Towns, uh, 25 points, five rebounds, one assist. But the key was, he seemed like a different man out there. Uh, more aggressive, more determined, 9 from 14 from the field. But the real key was from three. He's been kind of, kind of seemed like a liability on from three. And tonight, nailing critical three-pointer after three-pointer. after three pointer. Four from five from three critical down the stretch big reason why they won um anthony edwards was on fire uh 29 10 and 9. anthony edwards was not going to be denied tonight almost a th almost a triple double they went into dallas now this was in dallas they went into dallas determined that they were not going to get swept you you could tell this is one of those situations where you can kind of tell, like, no, not tonight. It is we are not going down tonight, uh, and and you could kind of feel it. Um, and the big one for me, the big guy, the big difference was Rudy Gobert, thirteen points, but ten big rebounds. But my big thing was. Rudy Gobert, the defensive player of the year, it didn't feel that way. Not in this series. He he seemed anything but the defensive player of the year. He was a he felt like a defensive liability uh, that Dallas kept exploiting time after time after time. Which was the key was we're gonna pull him out to three point land, and once he's out to three point land he became he can't he can't hang with Kyrie and Luca when 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 they're out that far up under the basket he's a force but what they did they kept forcing him out deep and deeper deeper and deeper which then put Rody Gobert at a disadvantage tonight that wasn't the case uh that's why the 10 rebounds were so important when you look at this when you look at this game um and talk about the keys of the game. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns redemption. I, I I love that word redemption. As I talked about scoring twenty of his twenty five points in the second half, meaning they're there to close to to close this game out, not get swept, and he was determined not to do it. Horrible. He's been horrible in this series. Uh, from the field and for three, really from three has been a big kind of like a, a detriment. He's been struggling. Now this game, he kind of got, he got his, his, I don't know what happened, but his focus was there. He was nailing those shots, uh, which became incredibly, you know, important. And then down the stretch in the second half, that's where I thought Cal, Carl Anthony Towns did his best work, which in previous in the previous games, uh, Minnesota kind of faded down the stretch. Dallas kind of took over 
not this game. Like, as I mentioned before, uh, a huge 26 of his points in the second half. 13 rebounds, 8 assists. Uh, huge plays after huge plays, including the big dunk. Uh, you know, he was determined. Also, talking about uh, shooting a shot and then Drew Holiday coming in. And securing the rebound and securing the win. That was all that was all critical. Uh Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards, a man on a mission. Uh that's kind of the way I looked at it. He was he was kind of the heart and soul of Minnesota last I mean last night. Uh coming through in critical moments, time after time after time. Showing resilience, being confident. You could tell from the beginning, he came there to set a pace, set example for his team. And I felt like his leadership, even in a critical situation where it's a game, it's a game four and you're about to get swept, his leadership kind of came through and kept Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert in this game. Uh, one out, you know, at critical points, just keeping these guys focused. So his leadership was a critical part. And then as a whole, as, as Carl Anthony Towns was kind of the leader and kind of really getting things going, the team as a whole kind of, kind of, kind of rose up a little bit and, and actually performed incredibly well. Like, like I said, staying off. 3-0, it wasn't it was not gonna be a swept. That is being they were determined not to get to get swept. Uh winning a critical game in Dallas, that was huge. Holding uh their defense. Minnesota has always been strong this year on defense. And it hasn't really been that way the first three games. Now, kind of holding Dallas from the field to 42 percent. And then closing things out in the final minutes. Uh, and then Edwards and Towns working together to close out the victory. That was the big issue. That was the big overall take. So what what next? How do you see this series playing out? They, they have not. Okay. Um, now, unfortunately, this series is over. <laughs> so this it was nice it was nice to see them put together a game and show what you know what got them to the to the to the Western Conference Finals but going down even at a even at 3-1 uh I think this is I think it's over I don't see them I don't see them winning the next game uh, if not, I don't see them any way possible taking this to a seven game series. I could be wrong, but I don't see that happening. So, but I, it's, I, it's going to be interesting. This is where I want to, I'm, I'm very curious about Minnesota here because this is going to show me how resilient this team is. Are they going to be able to muster up another game? Uh, I want to see how well Carl Anthony Towns does his, does his shooting slump come back, or is this a catalyst where his where he's back performing at that high elite level? Uh, Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert. This was just it was a, a, a defensive player of the year sighting happened last night. Does it keep on? That's what I, I want to see. Uh, for Dallas, Luca Luca put up a crazy, great game. The big problem was Kyrie wasn't as great as he has been. Uh, these guys, last game, they were both Batman, both coming in at 33 points. Uh, this game, it was kind of like Batman, eh, kind of Robin. You know, maybe Batgirl. I mean, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but, you know, wasn't quite the dynamic duo, let's just say. 
this game, Kyrie was a little bit off, but still Kyrie is a critical part of this game. And I, I, I don't see this lasting. I could see, I see Luca and Kyrie closing this game out coming up. So good to see, but maybe a little too, a little, a little too, too late. Yes. And this is that one thing where too little too I hate late. to be dismissive, but a lot of times you, you have that fight right before the, you, you, Teams that have that that mentality, they're not. They're determined. This team was determined. They weren't going to get swept. Whether they were in Dallas, whether they were in Minnesota, it did not matter. They weren't. Minnesota was not going to go down tonight. A lot of times, though, when you go into, you get that you get that critical game four win, and then you have that kind of relief. We didn't get swept that's when that gentleman sweep come in and that's kind of what i'm expecting here well we'll see maybe there will be a surprise maybe not i I mean it would be great because if not if if you know this extra game is huge because we weren't gonna have basketball until june 6th now we get an extra few days of basketball so listen i'm hoping for I'm hoping this game goes to six or seven. That's what I would love to see. I just don't think it's going to happen that way. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take our first break for this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking about um, what's next for the Utah Utes in terms of conferences. Uh, stay tuned. You are watching the G- the. Let me let me start that. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the name of the show again? I uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're tuned in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. You're sitting right next to him. Who are you? (laughs) 